Hello everyone, today I'm taking a look at a very famous shell scripting language called Bash. Bash is a shell program developed by computer programmer Brian Fox in 1989 for the GNU project. It was designed as a free software alternative for Born Shell. Bash is the default shell program used in many Linux distributions. In a shell, you can execute commands to move around directories, execute programs, and interact with files. To automate this process, you can write those commands in a file and execute it instead of typing them one by one. To make this script more customizable, Bash has many features that help in the process of automating tasks, like variables, which can contain strings, numbers, arrays, and even associative arrays, conditionals, loops, for, while, and until, and functions. All these features make Bash a good candidate to make scripts to automate most shell tasks. Of course, when the task is complex enough, it is common to use an actual scripting programming language like Python. Now, Bash by itself can call external C code. For that, I use a plugin made by user Taviso called ctypes.sh, which implements a foreign function interface. As the ctype.ca wiki says, Bash plugins are readily used, but allow you to extend Bash at runtime with additional built-ins. The two most important commands are dl call to call C functions from Bash, and dl open to load dynamic share objects. Another feature is the possibility to define a C struct with the struct command. Once the SO file is loaded, you can call any of its functions with dl call and define C struct with the struct command. Here's a simple hello world example using Relic. So first we include the CTIS library by using source. Then we load Relic by using the dl open command. And after that, we can simply just call any of the Rayleigh functions by simply using the command dl call, the Rayleigh function, and its parameters. So notice how to pass parameters to C functions, we have to type the type of the parameter, colon, and the value. So this is the same for all of the parameters that C types supports. So in this case, we have we initialize the window with 800 as the width, 450 as the height, and basic window as the type. And here we set the FPS to 60, and here we have the an infinite loop. In here, we just call begin drawing to so start drawing. Here we click the background, so notice how instead of passing a color stroke, I can simply pass a single number as an integer. Then I call draw FPS, which is another really function. I'll draw some text and drawing. And here I check if the user wants to close the window by just calling window should close. If this is equals to one, so notice how really functions or C functions also returns the type, colon and the value. In this case, boolean is one or zero. So if this is equal to one, then we break from the infinite loop and we simply call close window to, well, close the window. So if we test this, we can see that it works. So something strange about the Windows subsystem for Linux, which I've been using to develop the game is that it, for some reason, it doesn't respect really Flags. So, for example, this window is resizable, which I never told really to create a resizable window. But it, it doesn't really matter anyway. Here's a more advanced example. Make a texture bounce in the border of the screen. When making this example, I found two issues. It is not possible to call C functions that take C strokes by value. The content of the stroke are set to zero or no on the C side for some reason. And Bash by itself has no floating point arithmetic. To tackle the first issue, the stroke command has a parameter to define a pointer with allocated memory to the stroke. 
So I simply made wrappers to some functions to take pointers, compile it to a SO file and call them from bash. The command pack and unpack allows you to load the contents of the truck to the pointer and vice versa. This way, it is possible to pass rectangles, vectors, music, and any other C struct from bash to Rayleigh as long as the wrapper function exists. Regarding the floating point issue, I tried several things. First, I tried to use the OCK programming language to perform the operation. OCK is another scripting language for data processing. To use it, you simply print expressions you want to compute, and that way you can catch it from bash. This works, but since OCK is an external process, repeatedly calling 60 times per second is really bad for performance. Another option is to use BC, which stands for Basic Calculator. It also works, but the performance is even worse on OCK. What I ended up doing is perform all floating point operations in C. This way, there's no framework issues whatsoever. One thing to notice that is used several times in the game's code is how some variables have some kind of pattern around them. This is called parameter expansion or substring removal, and it is used to remove certain parts of the tree. For example, in this line, bf comes from a C function, which has the format float colon number. To be able to use it as a number from bash, we have to remove everything before the colon, which is what this expansion does. To use it as an integer in bash, we have to remove everything at the decimal point. In that case, this pattern is used. The difference between double hashes and double percentage sign is that the format is for prefixes and the letter is for suffixes. So now that we can pass C strokes and use floating point arithmetic, we are ready to make a game. The first thing you'll notice in the main file is the variable that stores the decimal point, which can be different depending on the user locale. We need this to remove the decimal part of the float variables without hard coding the decimal point. Speaking of variables, it's similar to the Lua language. They are global by default, which is what I mostly use. There is a way to create variables whose scope is limited by the function they are declared by using the local key. My convention is to declare global variables is to start with a prefix depending on the script they are declared. For the player script, all variables start with docs. For the title script, they start with title and the same applies to all other scripts. To define a variable, you simply set a value to it with the equal operator. You can also have type of variables by using the declare keyword along with this type. This way, these variables won't store any value that isn't their declared type. One important thing to notice is that bash is space sensitive, which means a single space in a command changes what it does, which I actually didn't know when starting using it. For example, this line assigns a value to a variable. But this attempts to call a function called a with parameters equal and zero. And the same thing happens with square brackets. So this line works as expected, but this line is interpreted as calling square bracket to equal equal to close square bracket, which isn't a valid command. Another thing to notice is that all ifs use double square brackets instead of single square brackets. And the fact is, for most cases, single square brackets will have worked fine. So what's the difference? A single square bracket is a standard shell command, and it is the same command as test, but it needs a closing square bracket. Double square brackets is not part of the standard. It's a keyword which can use special syntax rules that single square bracket doesn't have, among other things. That's why it's considered an improved version of the single square bracket, which is why I use all over the code base. Let's now look at the whole arrays work in bash particularly how I use them to store the bullets. First, arrays are one-dimensional only and can be indexed or associated. To set an array, you can use the component assignment by writing the variable, equal operator, and the elements of the array in parentheses and separated by a space. To store the bullets, I set two separate lists with the x and y coordinates. To append values, use the component assignment with plus equal operator. 
The interesting part about arrays is that to remove an element, you have to call on set on it, but that just replaces the value with nothing. So you have to manually create a new array by using the parameter expansion with add, which returns all elements of the array without the one while that we just unset. Basically, there is no building way to remove an element from an array and shift the following elements. According to this Stack Overflow answer, shell arrays are intended to provide a second level of quoting. In a case where, for example, you want to pass two space separated strings as two parameters instead of four parameters. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show for the game. As I was, you can find the repository in GitHub. It worked for both Linux and Windows by using the Windows subsystem for Linux. Thank you very much for watching.